Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David, and today we're going to go over what I believe is a hard level question from Edabit. And thank you, Lori, for uh, helping me out with my pronunciation there. I was uh, saying it wrong. Edabit. I think I was saying eat a bit. Uh, ed as an education. But, anyways, um, let's go over this question and uh, we'll go over, we'll talk through it together, make a strategy for it, and then code it. All right, so this one is called Number of Boomerangs. A boomerang is a V-shaped sequence that is either upright or upside down. Uh, specifically, a boomerang can be defined as a subarray of length 3 with the first and last digits being the same and the middle digit being different. Okay, so one thing here that I want to recognize is if you don't know what a boomerang is, this is what it is. Uh, it is a V-shaped object uh, that you throw around and kind of like a frisbee, you throw it into the air, but this one will come back to you. Um, it, this detail here, um, although it is highlighted, what I like to consider this is just noise. It does not really matter whether you knew a, a boomerang or not. It is a V-shaped item, not a sequence, of course. The boomerang is a physical item. But details like this might throw you off. And the only reason why I'm addressing it is because in an interview situation, if you want to get a job as a software engineer, you're going to have to go through these interviews. And when you hear boomerang, and if you don't know it, then it might throw you off. It would be the same thing as me saying a press down bar is a V-shaped sequence and you might not know what a press down bar is, but it is this V-shaped item. And you know what? Um, it might not even matter. It, and it doesn't matter. We just uh, care that it is a subarray of length three and that the first and last digits are the same and the middle digit is different. So here are some examples, 373, three, one negative one, one and five six five and I believe um, later on in the notes down here uh, it says okay um, three identical numbers it is not considered a boomerang of course because that is just a straight line and let's look at some of the examples 373 three is a boomerang here um, the next one we see is a 151 and the next one we see is a 2 negative 2 2 as defined in these answers right here if we look at this example <coughs> right under word, right under here, uh, we can see that 171 is considered a boomerang, and so is this 717. And so um, what this does tell us is that numbers that are in one boomerang can be used again. And that is very important because, um, you know, for whatever reason, somebody might think, okay, we created this one boomerang, and because we already used these numbers, let's just go ahead and skip to the next sequence. And boom, there's our next one. But actually, within those two, there are two more. And so uh, we need to recognize that our pattern can be reused within numbers that are reused. And so this one considered to have five because it, it started from the 171. Instead of jumping to the 717, it went to this 717, and then 171, and then 717, and 171. All right. so. With these questions here, this is a pattern seeking question and we're using an array to kind of seek out the pattern. And usually in these questions, despite how hard it gets, uh, the difficulty of these pattern seeking questions only differs in the fact that your pattern will be more complex. Um, this is, I would say this is one of the more simpler patterns that we're searching for. It has a very defined length, which is always very helpful. And it has a very defined uh, a set of rules. And if your pattern, maybe someone gives you a question and you're not sure what the pattern is, you have to ask them because depending on how well you understand what the pattern is, it will pretty much decide whether you get the problem right or wrong. And so this pattern is, like I said, very simple. Length three, which is probably one of the biggest factors of this whole um, pattern seeking because patterns can, sometimes patterns, uh, qu pattern questions, they want you to search for different ones. Um, this one length three. All we need to make sure is that the second number or whatever number we're currently at, the next number is different and the, the number after that is the same. And so if we're, when we're looking for patterns within an array, <clears throat> we like to work with indexes. And in order to work with indexes, we can use the very generic uh, way of iterating through an array, which is the for loop. And luckily, that is the strategy that we're going to use here. And so one thing that we need to know as we iterate through an array such as this one down here, if we want to look at a bit longer one, is 
we're going to iterate through an array like we always do, which means that our i is going to rep be represented as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. And so when it's at the zeroth place, how do we determine our pattern? Well, while we're within that for loop, we want to kind of be able to see the future. Or in other pattern cases, we want to be able to see around us. And for our purposes here, we pretty much only need to see the future. And the good thing about for loops and arrays is that they are indexable. And depending on how you increment those indexes, usually, you know, the I++ at the end of the for loop, that's just uh, saying that you're incrementing it by one. And so what you will do is, um, or not what you will do, but because we use the indexes, we can also kind of zone in onto indexes that are this one, even despite the fact that we're currently on the index of this number, we can just plus one to that and look into the future here. Plus two into that, we get to look into the future here. And so let's go ahead and use that strategy. The two things that are very important, let me re reiterate it, is know your pattern because that's how you're going to define your conditional. And two, utilize the fluidity of indexes. And so let's go ahead and take that into consideration and go ahead and write this code. And so for pattern seeking questions, we're always, you're pretty much always going to be asked how, much, how many patterns are there or how many of this pattern that we're looking for is in here. And so we're going to start with a count and we're pretty much just going to return the count right off the bat. That way we don't have to worry about it. Um, whether or not you're going to end early within a for loop, perhaps for whatever reason, uh, that could be the case. But at the very end, even after that, you're going to want to return it. So let's just go. We what we did was we uh, ended it early, and so like I said, uh, with these pattern questions, you want to kind of go through the whole entire array. And because we want to utilize the power of the indexes, we're going to use a for loop for doing that. Um, okay, so must read a link. All right, so when we do this, we get to use uh, the array of i. And let, let me um, copy this. OK. So, so at this point, we are going to um, say we have to have a conditional. We have to define our pattern. And our pattern here is going to be the number i is that. So while we're here, what we want to do is we want to look into the future, and we want to look into the future. So we want to look into the future twice. How do we do that? Well, if array of i is going to give us this index and kind of zone in onto this one, how do we get to that one? Well, this is the index right after it. So all we have to do is plus 1. And so at this point, actually, we want to make sure that this uh, current, whatever current number we're at, the one right after it, which is defined by the index plus one, is different. And so that's what we did right there. And also, we care that our current index, so this one we're using, we're still here. We're saying, okay, the one, one away from that, we want to make sure that one is the same. And so we'll use the same strategy here. This one is the same as that one. Well, we went, to, we got to the seven by just doing plus one. We're going to get to that next one by adding 2 to it. And if those conditions match up, um, we can count plus plus. And if it didn't match up, say we were at a situation here where maybe we were at the 7, and i plus 1, so i is pointing to the 7. If we were at i plus 1, we would point to the 3. It's different. That's good. i plus 2 would point to the 2. It's not the same. Therefore, we would not go into this conditional. We would not increment the count because that's not a boomerang. And we would move on. Uh, one question you might have is perhaps this index of i gets to this 7, and we can say, okay, array of i uh, does not equal this 1. Okay, that's good, but what about here when we do array of i is equal to an index place that is not even here? Will that give us problems? And in JavaScript, that does not give us problems. Uh, what this will give us is undefined. Uh, simply, it's not going to blow up on us. I know some other languages out there um, if you start trying to index into a part of the array that is not even defined or not even existent, you're going to get some problems. But luckily with JavaScript, that's not the case. Um, and so this is our condition. It was pretty simple. We utilized, well, we understood our pattern. We, we knew that, okay, 
with our given number, we needed to make sure that the next one was just different and the one after that was the same. And we were able to do that by utilizing the indexes, plus one to get to the next one, I plus two to get to the one after that. And because this uh, for loop just increments I plus plus, we don't try to skip over two. We go to the seven and we do the same set of conditionals, therefore catching this 717 and all the other ones after that. So let's go ahead and check this problem and make sure that we got the right answer. All right, there we go. Um, that was the right answer. And so hopefully this video was helpful. I did a lot more explaining than the other videos and so it might have been a bit longer, but hopefully uh, it still helped you out. And if you liked it, be sure to like the video, comment and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.